for the 9-11 community. WINS, WINS FM, and HD1 New York. Always live on the free Odyssey app. 39 degrees now in Maspeth, only 27 in Patterson. It's 36, partly cloudy in Central Park. The humidity, 56%, winds northeast at 10. More people get their news from 1010 Winds than from any other radio station in the nation. Gary Souders, our service aide, Eileen McClomber, the writer, Justin Schrager is at the editor's desk. I'm Susan Richard. All news, all the time. This is 1010 Winds at 923 FM, New York. Good morning, 36 degrees, 8 o'clock, it's Tuesday, November 15th. I'm Lee Harris, and here's what's happening. Armed robbery in the Diamond District last night, crooks making off with Rolexes and more. After a week of counting votes, it appears Democrat Katie Hobbs has squeaked by Republican Kerry Lake in the Arizona governor's race. The GOP is one shy, wind shy of taking the House. Former President Trump makes an announcement tonight. Some former supporters wish he would delay what they think he has to say. New York finally has a new Museum of Broadway will get a preview. President Biden at the G20 summit announces the U.S. will be giving Indonesia $20 billion to help it transition off coal. Sports, the Islanders won, the Eagles didn't, so they're no longer undefeated. 10-10 wins accurate Sun giving away clouds today. Rain arriving by sunset could get a little snow north and west of the city. High today, 46. There's time, 801. Traffic and transit on the lines, and here's Karen Stewart. As we check what you need to know about the bridges and tunnels, we have a disabled vehicle on the northbound FDR at 96th Street. And I mention it because the delays bled down all the way to about 41st, 42nd Street. And so it's affecting the inbound 59th Street Bridge, the Queens Midtown Tunnel, and the RFK Triborough. The RFK Triborough right now is delayed uh, coming into it from the major approaches down the Whitestone Expressway up from the Grand Central westbound into the BQE, and then we're all, all right into uh, the area right before the bridge, and then the bridge gets heavy with all this nonsense going on, and there are some delays getting on the, uh, excuse me, coming from the southbound Deegan onto the Bronx span of the RFK Triborough. The Throgs Neck and Whitestone are fine, except the Whitestone Expressway is jammed from Northern Boulevard up into the bridge, and we don't really have any northbound issues right now on the Cross Island or the Clearview to the Bronx bound Throgs Neck Bridge. If you're heading out to the Lower Eastern crossings. The Brooklyn Battery is the heaviest. We are absolutely packed on the Gowanus from Fort Hamilton Parkway to Atlantic Avenue. Absolutely packed. And a check of mass transit for you. We've got Bronx bound twos and fours, Brooklyn bound B's and C's delayed. By the way, the George is 45, the Lincoln's 50, and the Holland is 45 as we check what you need to know about the bridges and tunnels at the Hudson River. Traffic is sponsored by Whole Foods Market. Traffic and transit every 10 minutes on the ones, breaking traffic alerts whenever they happen. I'm Karen Stewart, 1010 Winds on 92.3 FM. Prime members, wow your crowd and save on 365 by Whole Foods Market organic frozen whole turkey at just $2.49 per pound and frozen whole turkey at just $1.49 per pound through December 31st while supplies last. Shop in store or online. Terms apply. It is November 15th so maybe we shouldn't be too surprised if we see a little snow in the AccuWeather forecast. Fortunately the emphasis here is on little as Dean DeVore is here to tell us. Dean? And the other emphasis is that it's really away from the city to have any impact on that and, and you got to go out to that 287 corridor around there and beyond and especially in some of the highest elevations where we have those uh, winter weather advisories out to go into effect at 5 p.m. this evening and continue to about 7 a.m. tomorrow. The biggest problem is uh, in those areas, I think, with the snow mixing in or at least uh, all snow for a time in those areas, the temperatures are going to be close enough to freezing that we're going to have some slussy uh, slipperiness and some iciness out there. Now, closer to the city, we may have a little bit of a mix in or a little uh, bit of snow at the beginning, but it should mix out to rain as temperatures in the city itself will settle around 40 and actually rise a little bit tonight. That rain continues into tomorrow morning, then exits stage east. Sunny skies in upper 40s, real feels in the 30s tomorrow. Chilly end of the week, even colder air, more January-like air actually coming in for the end of the week and early next week. I'll talk about that in 10 minutes on New York's weather station, 1010 Winds on 92.3 FM. At the moment, 36 degrees and cloudy. We're going up to 46. Armed robbery in the Diamond District last night. Glenn Shuck on the story this morning from the district. Avis Diamond here at 71 West 47, just off 6. The target of these armed thieves last night, just after 8 o'clock, the 
four people leaving from inside, believed to be employees or maybe even the owner, since they had closed two hours earlier. Two men wearing masks and had guns grabbed at least 72 grand worth of jewelry and several Rolex watches. I spoke with this man who's worked in the block for decades. This has been one of the safest areas of the city. I've, I've worked in that building. I started my career in that building 25 years ago. And the fact that it's an armed robbery, it, that's pretty sad. The NYPD reviewing surveillance cameras that are positioned right outside of this business. The one shot 1010 wins a 92.3 FM. 47th and 6th. After an entire week of counting votes, word from Arizona is that Katie Hobbs is likely the new governor of that state, leading Carrie Lake with 50.4% of the vote to Lake's 49.6. Even though Carrie Lake is projected to lose, she is a rock star among Donald Trump faithful. She has repeated his false election claims on the campaign trail and aligned herself closely with Trump. Her name has been floated as a possible VP contender, assuming he runs for president, but she will not be governor of Arizona with the loss. She was allowed his voice on the campaign trail in Arizona in Trump style. The former TV news anchor would bash reporters and blasted her much quieter Democrat opponent Katie Hobbs, who's now projected to win. Hobbs said it was a choice between sanity and chaos. Alex Stone, EBC News. Re Republicans, meantime, are one official win shy of taking control of the House with 218 seats, but vote counting continues in races in California and several other states a week after Election Day. Former President Trump will have something to say tonight, but there are some people who wish he would wait to say what they think he has to say. An anti-tax group that was once one of Donald Trump's biggest supporters, now urging the former president not to announce another presidential run now. They point to polling that shows a growing number of Republican voters say Mr. Trump's insults against fellow Republicans has eroded his support and that announcing now could hurt Republicans' chances in the Georgia Senate runoff. Donald Trump responding on Truth Social, attacking Club for Growth, calling them Republicans in name only. Correspondent Andy Field, Mr. Trump's announcement is scheduled for 9 tonight. He'll make that announcement from mar a -Lago. Mr. Trump was subpoenaed to show up before the J6 committee yesterday. There was virtually no chance that was going to happen, and it didn't. So what happens now? Loyola Law Professor Lori Levinson says probably nothing. Former President Trump could be, theoretically, charged with contempt, just like Steve Bannon, for not complying with the subpoenas by Congress. But it's unlikely that that will really happen because there are so many steps in between. Mr. Trump has filed a lawsuit arguing that he doesn't have to testify or provide any documentation. New York is home to many museums, but it's never had a permanent Broadway museum. Until now, that is. And this museum is not actually on Broadway, but it is in the theater district. There's so much history made here that's now on full display. Co-founder of the Museum of Broadway, Julie Boardman, says people will be able to immerse themselves as soon as they walk in. You hear, give my regards to Broadway, and then it kind of goes stylistically through the years. There are interactive displays. People will be able to take a peek backstage and get a glimpse into past and present shows. We call it the Playbill Room, but it's everything that's currently running on Broadway that day. And so you'll see all of these different shows. We have these benches from Jersey Boys that you can kind of sit on and hang out. Darius Ryan's 1010 wins on 92.3 FM on West 45th Street in Midtown. State Comptroller Thomas DiNapoli has been going over the municipal employment roster for the city of New York, and he has determined the city has lost more than 19,000 full-time workers over the last couple of years. This despite the city hiring more than 40,000 new employees in the past fiscal year. Henry Garrido of DC 37, the largest municipal employees union, says one issue here is that the city doesn't pay enough, at least for some jobs. It's very hard to recruit people to go work for the park for $15 an hour for the minimum. Uh, when you've got, you know, you've got McDonald's or Whole Foods, so the private sector hiring is like 19 and $20 an hour. Annapolis report puts most of the blame on the pandemic, but he warns that if the trend isn't reversed, essential services for children and vulnerable residents could be impacted. The migrant tent facility on Randall's Island cost the city hundreds of thousands of dollars to build, but not many migrants showed up there, and it was closed after less than a month. Therefore, Mayor Adams says it was a success. 
regardless of all the noise around us, we executed a plan that prevented uh, this city from dealing with a major crisis. The mayor says the priority was be uh, prepared and the use of Randall's Island was low, he says, because he asked the federal government to address the border crisis and it did. But city controller Brad Landers is demanding to know how much this all cost. He's given the Adams administration until tomorrow to produce some receipts. 36 degrees, it's mostly cloudy. We're going up to 46. Now this Fisher Center for Alzheimer's Research Foundation. Honor a loved one with a tribute donation at alzinfo.org slash radio. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening and watching the news for today, November 15th, 2022. Again, I want to thank all of the supporters that are viewing the videos here on my channel. It's really, really appreciated, and it helps grow the channel. So let's get the word out. There is a um, news channel, kind of, right? Because I'm showing the news. And I was watching, really quick before I let you go, I was watching a video of a gentleman in the early 90s. He was in New York, and he was filming as... Or he wasn't filming, but I think, you know, someone as, as a passenger in his car was filming as he was driving the streets of New York and the radio was on. <clears throat> Commercial radio was on. And someone in his video made a comment that it was interesting to listen to broadcasts from that long ago. And one of the comments that stuck with me is that he said, or the commenter said, that it's very rare to listen to vintage commercials. He said a lot of people are recording a lot of different things, a lot of different broadcasts, but what's lacking is the vintage commercials on the radio. So I thought that was interesting. I may try to leave some of the commercials that come on during the news broadcast also you know to save them for posterity all right guys enough of me babbling you guys have a great day and we'll see you on the next driving in the news video